o'clock. You all clear? Yep. All right, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, Great. so we are going to touch a little bit on EIGRP, or as I like to call it, eGRIP. Okay, so we've had some uh, some teachings by Dave. Uh, we talked about OSPF. We talked about uh, RIP version one, version two. And here we are today starting our journey with eGRIP. So what is eGRIP? You've heard that it's a combination of distance vector, a combination of link state, otherwise known as, it's a hybrid, it's a hybrid protocol, okay? Now, let me ask you this, does anybody know what EIGRP was built to replace? Um, I think it's IG, IGRP, the previous Ex Cisco protocol. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So, uh, and I, and, and, and what I'll call, I'll call that I grip. Okay. I'm just going to call that I grip for short, you know, that was the answer to some of the problems that we were seeing with rip. If you remember Dave in the last session was talking about how, uh, we had a rip version one that was classful which created problems as far as wasting IP space and all the other good stuff. Their answer to that was RIP version two, right? Now, iGRIP came into the picture to replace that, okay? So like, for example, one of the limitations that we remember about RIP was that, does anybody remember the hop count that RIP had? Yeah, I believe it's like 15. Exactly. So that means pretty much you had to have kind of a small network in order to effectively use RIP. And as you know now, networks span across the globe, you know, so you know in today's environment, RIP wouldn't cut it. And even back then it was getting to the point where RIP wasn't gonna be able to cut it anymore. So uh, when you think about some of the things that iGRIP came into play, to replace RIP, uh, iGRIP actually increased the hop count from 15 up to 255. So now when, when iGRIP came into play, you know, we was able to get a little bit further than what we were used to, okay? Now iGRIP, you know, uh, it had its limitations. Don't get me wrong, it had its limitations too when we look at it today, but back then it was state of the art. But uh, like I said, you know, you're looking at, <clears throat> for example, iGRIP back then was, its hellos were 90 seconds. It was sending its hellos out compared to, does anybody know what EIGRP's hello, hello sent, comes, goes out at, at the rate? Uh, is that two seconds, if I remember correctly? How many? Two. It's five. It's five. You're close. It's five, okay. which is still a great, better uh, mechanism than waiting for 90 seconds. What do you, what do you mean? When we, I'm sorry. What do you mean when you say hello? So basically, you know, when hello packets go from one router, and let's just say it's looking for a neighbor or, okay. you know, uh, it wants to it wants to communicate with another speaker out there, right? Yeah. So, so you're talking a hello packet going out every five seconds. Now, here's the thing about hello packets. Hello packets are used for discovery and rediscovery. Okay. <clears throat> so, so what I mean by that is a hello packet goes out initially just to discover other neighbors. You follow me? Is that kind of like when, uh, like, say my phone is, like, searching for, like, a... A tower. Like a, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then when it connects, you know, it goes to, it goes to its own little... I ain't going to call it a TCP handshake. Well, well, yeah, it is. You could, We could call it that. Once it finds that tower, it goes through some initializations and, and some handshakes, and you see 
if, if it's like my telephone, you see arrows on a little icon going up and down. Yep. That's traffic going both ways because it's, it's negotiating certain things, you know. So, like I said, that hello is used to discover. And if the in the event, if something's torn down, that same hello can also be used to rediscover. Okay. So let me uh, go ahead and let me <coughs> see if I can share my screen here. Uh, screen number one. All right. Tell me when you see the little Microsoft Paint, old fashioned Microsoft Paint on your screen there. Yeah, we can see it. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, and I know Dave probably laughing in the background because I'd always keep it with this little simple, <laughs> simple second grade drawings and stuff. But let's just say we got. the two routers here that's in black, right? And let's just go ahead and we can we can connect these here. Wrong picture. All right. And we'll, we'll do this. We'll connect here and we'll connect there. And we'll come down here. Okay, so let's just say we got all these here EGP speaking routers, okay? And uh, the two routers in black, okay? We're bringing these here online. So we'll call this first one, router one, and we'll call this one, router two, okay? So, what happens first is R1 comes online and it sends that first hello out. Okay. And uh, does any because any does anybody know uh, how it sends that hello out? Let me give you do you have the choice of a broadcast, a unicast, or a multicast? How do you think that hello goes out? Multicast. Exactly. You know the IP address of that? Uh, I don't remember in my head, but it's too, is it what? is it ten? No, ten. Yeah, no, yeah, no. You're right. You're right. It's it's two twenty four dot zero dot zero dot ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that hello goes out right from R one because it's saying, "Hey, I'm looking for some uh, EGP speakers. You know, that's on my network that wants to be a part of this hair family." All right. Now. R2, R2 actually picks this here hello up, right? And this is what R2 does. R2 puts R1 in a pending state. Okay? It puts it in a pending state. And when it does this, it's basically, it's waiting for an initialization package and an initialization acknowledgement packet. Okay. So when R2 gets the first hello from R1, it puts it in the pending state and then it sends its hello over to R1. You know, okay, you reached out to me. Let me reach out to you. So what does R1 do with that, that, that hello packet from R2? It puts it in a pending state. Okay. Now, does anybody have any idea why we're being put in pending states when we send these hellos? Just take a wild guess. Not a problem. Not a problem. So, if we got R1 and R2 coming online, right? You see all these other red routers around here? 
in this here little picture, these here are already active EIGRP speakers. Okay, so they got stuff going back and forth and this, that, and the other. The reason the 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 R1 and R2 put each other in pending states while they're waiting for initialization and, and acknowledgement packets is a sense of control. Okay, so so picture this, picture this. We all been the new guy at a new job, right? And we get into a new job. And we see how things are going and things sometimes can seem like it's overwhelming. Do y'all agree in the beginning stages of a new job? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Okay. So here's the thing. Your manager or team lead, whatever it may be, kind of shields you from what's actually going on because you're not quite ready yet. You follow me? And when it does, when, when, when they do that, they're kind of bringing you, they kind of ramping you up to speed as they onboard you. You know, they kind of show you around the different databases. This is how you access this. This is how you do that. You know what I mean? So in eGrip, this is what's happening. These here routers are put in the pending state so that they won't get caught up right away in the chaos of eGrip that's going on around them. Does that make sense? So, so from here, R2 is now put into a pending state, okay? And what happens is uh, R1 now sends this initialization packet over to R2, okay? And what's going on, after these here going through a pending state, they go through a, a, a sync. Now, now, when I say this, this is going to ring a bell to you. A synchronization, a synchronization uh, acknowledgement, and an acknowledgement. What did I just describe? The three-way handshake. Exactly. So while they're in this pending state, they go through the TCP handshake in between. Okay. And, and what happens is during that TCP handshake, that initialization uh, packet is sent out with that first synch uh, uh, sequence packet. All right, and R1 receives its first init, right? And what's, what, is, what it's doing now is, now it's gonna send a init to R2 and R2 does the same thing, okay? And what happens is now, R R one, when it sends out this initialization packet, it's going to wait for an acknowledgement from R two that says, "Hey, you got this." And the same thing with R two is going to say, "Hey, I'm waiting to see if you got my initialization." Okay, so that basically happens is what happens at that point. Now they're waiting for the initialization acknowledgement to come. Okay, so when R one, and this is also happening on the other side as well. Uh, R1 gets this initialization, then it's, like I said, it's, it's waiting for the acknowledgement of its init packet that it sent, okay? Same thing with R2, vice versa. So once it receives that acknowledgement that that initialization packet was received, okay, there's a sequence number that's involved with it to confirm that this is what you sent, okay? What happens at that point, <clears throat> We now have our initialization, we have our acknowledgements, and then we have basically uh, R1 and R2, what is RQ? R2 are basically neighbors now. Okay. So that's basically the, the hello process between two EIGRP speakers. First router sends the hello. The second router catches it and puts it in the pending state. The second router sends its hello, and the first router catches it, puts it in the pending state. Okay. And this is to protect the routers because, like I said, there's EIGRP stuff that's going on all around it. So we don't want that. We don't want our new router to participate 
and that EIGRP stuff that's that's readily going available because you got EIGRP speakers looking for new route updates, looking for query. They're sending out queries. There's reply package uh, packets going out. The new EIGRP speakers, just like a brand new employee, don't know Jack. You follow me? So once it's in the pen, the appending states, the pending states, the initializations goes out from R1 to R2. R2 says, okay, I got this. Let me acknowledge that I got it and send that notification back and vice versa, okay? R1 receives that, that acknowledgement, accepts it. As far as it's concerned, it's good to go. Okay, now it's, okay, you legit, you EIGRP, you on the same network, you're, uh, you have the same type of authentication that I'm using, we good to go, we can neighbor up, okay? And then that's what happens with, with EIGRP. And, and that happens in, let me see, let's show this real quick. All in the blink of an eye. Uh, run. All right, so I got the eGrip shut down on here. Let me just open that up. <clears throat> No shut. All right, so those two, and you see how quickly these here neighbors came up as adjacencies. That's how fast that actually happens in in in, in the uh, background. Okay, and actually, if you turn on the debugs, there's certain debugs you can see where the packets are actually being the 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 packets are actually, you know, waiting for the acknowledgement, you know, waiting for the initialization. You can see it. Uh, one router was is called enqueuing. Uh, the router will actually enqueue the other one while it's waiting for these acknowledgements to go by and come through. Okay. Does uh anybody got any questions as far as that little process? I know I know y'all hear you know hellos are sent, they come up, blah blah blah, and that's done. That is true, but this is what happens in eGrip when those hellos go back and forth to each other. This this is what happens. Now that might be a little bit deeper than what you probably was waiting on or expecting, but you know, Dave and I would be doing you a disservice if we didn't go into those weeds like that sometimes. So that's what that is. Any questions on that part? Okay. Nope, we all good. Okay. All right. All so. Good. I'm going to go ahead and let's talk about some of the main tables that you will encounter in EIGRP. Okay. So <clears throat> some of the main tables that you may have heard of uh, that will be, you'll become very close with, very intimate with in your eGRIP journeys and your networking career. Okay. You have up my <clears throat> paint here. So let me go ahead and kill this. So you have an eGrip, you have the interface, you have the neighbor, and you have the topology. Okay. These are three tables that you will become familiar with when you start dealing with eGrip, all right? Now, let's take a look at one of these tables. Uh, EIGRP, interface, okay? This here is your interface table, all right? And as you see, it tells you how many peers you got there, right? And something else that may be of importance is this right here. Your average smooth round trip timer. Okay, trip timer. And basically what this may what this means is this is actually a little bit more evident when you're dealing with your uh neighbor table. Okay. And I'll come back to this. But like I said, this is your interface table. You can count the amount of peers that you have, and you can also see 
which interfaces that you have participating in the current autonomous system uh, of, eager, of the eager protocol that you're running. So let's go and let's take a look at the neighbor table. All right, so here we have the IP address of our neighbor. Okay, this is a dot three, which tells me is, is, is talking to the J3 router. All right, so that's a dot three. Okay, interface that's participating. All right, we got a whole whole time. Okay, and we have an uptime here. All right, and again, again, the smooth round trip time, okay? Smooth round trip time, all right? So let's 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 take a closer look here. All right, so when we talk about <clears throat> hold timers, okay? Now, in OSPF, you learned about timers, am I correct? Yes. Okay, so you know that in OSPF, you have a hold timer, and what's the other one called? Uh, a dead timer? No, no. What 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 is it called? Is it hello as well? Yeah, it's hello and dead. That's that's what it is. It's hello and dead. So you know that the dead timer in OSPF basically says, uh, if I haven't heard from you in this amount of time i'm removing you from right and those timers let me ask you this true or false those timers have to match is that that's true or false? okay true. that's so right actually yes that's one of them yeah. that's right all right so in egrip check this out the the the, the whole timer and egrip kind of plays the same way but here's the thing with egrip egrip sends you that that time of whatever it said it, it, it's i think it's like uh for every one second what is it like a three three to one one to three ratio so if you got like a 30 second uh a five second hello you have like a 15 second hold okay so what egrip does egrip sends that value out of whatever that hold timer is and this is what egrip says Egrip isn't worried about you. Egrip is saying, I'm giving you this here time. If you haven't heard from me, go ahead and tear it down. You follow me? You see the difference between that and OSPF? OSPF, I'm waiting to hear from you within a given period of time. That's why our timer's got to match. And Egrip, they're the opposite. They don't have to match. But I'm going to give you the time that I'm 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 uh, I'm set for, and if you haven't heard from me in that amount of time, go ahead and kill it. Is everybody clear on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got this here uh, SRTT, the smooth round trip trip time. All right. So what this is. This basically tells the router, the EIG speaking router, that for this neighbor, I can expect this type of response on a packet going to this neighbor. So let me break that down in, in layman's terms. Uh, we got Patrick in here. Who else we got in here? Let me look at this here list. See if I can pick on somebody tonight. Okay, we got James in here. So let's 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 just say this. Let's just say this. Let's just say we out in the hood, and we 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 just chilling out, you know, summer afternoon, this that and the other. And I asked James, James, I need you to go to the corner store and pick this up, and you know, get some of this, you know, uh, bring back some drinks, blah blah blah. James says, okay, cool. Now here's the thing. I know how long it should take James to go to that corner store and bring this stuff back. You follow me? That's how this timer behaves. When it's talking to its neighbors, that time, and it can vary in different topologies depending on how large they are. 
but that timer tells that router how long it can expect to receive an acknowledgement from a packet that is sent out, such as an update, such as a, re, uh, a, a, a reply packet, such as a, a query packet, okay? That's what that timer uh, is, is basically uh, set up for. And it will vary. It will vary, especially when you get into the, and we'll talk about this later on down the line, you get into those, uh, those query situations where we got a prefix that went down for some reason. You know, you'll see these timers fluctuate and stabilize, you know, to a certain point and when they reconverge, okay? And let me see this here. RTO, this RTO is nothing more than a retransmission timeout, okay? This basically says how long I'm going to wait on James before uh, James either calls us on the cell phone and say, hey, you know, they they missing this. I'm going to get this instead. Or, you know, James just comes back, okay? So if that time elapses, then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go send Patrick to the corner store. You follow me? So if I don't hear back from that packet I sent out the first time to my neighbor and that time elapsed, then I'll go ahead and send the next packet because hey, maybe something, maybe it got lost, maybe it got black hole. So I'm going to let that time, that retransmission time out go through its full time frame before I send another packet out. Is everybody clear on that? Yep. Okay. All right. Now you hear about this here Q count. All right. This here Q count is like I call, I like to call this the uh, the amount of packets we got float, fl flaring out there in the wind, flapping in the wind. Okay. So I think you get the picture of how eGrip needs to have this reliable transport and actually it actually does have that you'll hear the term rtp but we'll talk about that later on reliable transport protocol but i think you get the idea how eigrp uh operates on a lot of packets being acknowledged that's going out there do you everybody agree yep okay so the q count the q count like I call the out in the wind flapping packets. Q count, when you send a packet out, so let's just say I send James to that corner store to go get that stuff. I'm going to put a one. Q count is going to increment by one. Okay. Because I'm waiting on who? Who, who am I waiting on? Waiting on James. Exactly. So I'm going to put that Q count of one out there. Okay. And uh, if... In the EIGRP world, that's a packet that's going out to a given prefix, a, pre, a, a given route, okay? Let's say in a situation where eGrip has lost a specific router, okay? That specific router had accesses to some other routes that were important, some other prefixes that were important, all right? So, and we'll get into this, you know, later on down the line in the eGrip teachings, but eGrip will send a query to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I need to know how to get to network 20.20.20.20, okay? And when that packet goes out, however many packets it is, because there may be multiple routers that can tell us this information, uh, this here Q count will increase by how many packets are being sent out okay, to find that information. And it will stay incremented until the acknowledgement of those packets come back. Like I said, I'm waiting for James to come back, right, from the, from the store, okay? So at that point, James comes back with the payload, okay? He comes back with the chips, he comes back with the Mountain Dews, you know, he comes back with the Slim Gems. Whatever it is that he went to the store to get, he's bringing that payload back. Same thing happens in the eGrip environment. Those queries go out to find, hey, who has the quickest route to get to network 2020, 2020, okay? When that, pack, when that information comes back in the updates, all right, 
to to this here router this 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 increment now go it goes back to zero so so you see how this here q counter i call it the out in the wind waiting packet counter is waiting on the packets that is sent out to be acknowledged and for those results to come back does that make sense to everybody yes sir yeah okay all right and uh let me see we're running right up on 30 minutes so the let me let me just do this last one right right quick the last table i want to talk about <laughs> as you heard called the topology table Okay, now this is egrip's form of the routing table. Okay, this is the egrip's form of the routing table. So the thing is, egrip will calculate successor routes and feasible successors to get to these various networks. Okay, and uh, it will store it in its own table. So the thing is. We can have up to, I want to say, six possibilities of getting to one specific uh, prefix, one specific network within the eGRIP topology table. Now, does that mean, and this is for anybody to answer, does that mean that all six of those are going to go to the global routing table? No. Good, good, good. Okay, so you understand that. So this is just a little small buffet of possibilities that we can choose from to get to uh, network XYZ, okay? And what you'll see is you'll see the feasible distance, okay? How to get there from my point of view, okay? And let me, let me, let me go ahead and also... So you see this here, P, what this P means? So passive, and this, this actually sounds counterintuitive, actually. So the passive indicator that you'll see in this table basically says, okay, that network is stable. We good, we don't got to send no updates about that. That, that network is stable, that 50, because that's basically directly connected to uh, number three right here. Right here, you see that? So that's just basically saying, when, when you see it as passive, that basically says it's stable. If you're in an active state, okay, if, if you got a network that has an eight next to it, more than likely, you're going to have a Q count increment because when it's in an active state, you got packets out there going to look trying to find out how the hell to get to it you follow me so that's basically how i feel as though and how i remember what passive and active means in egrip okay passive means basically we are stable okay uh it isn't it, it is an active route but not in the sense that egrip looks at it as we don't have to do no updates on it because we know it. It's been confirmed. Uh, information has been exchanged. We good to go. Active, something broke, something got disconnected, may have to be reestablished. Okay. And we got packets out there trying to find another way to get to that or, you know, actually, you know, confirm that we are down so that we can pull another let's say, like I said, what I say, maximum of about six, we can pull another route out of there and add that to the global routing table. Okay. So does anybody have any questions? Okay, I take that as a no. Uh, no this is good. When it's when it says one successor, that means that there is one router that has a better, um, um is a, I guess a quicker way of getting to that network or yeah. So basically, that is the best path, okay. And what that what that actually is, 
in the previous picture that I had up here, mm -hmm. uh, I had all those red routers and the two black routers. Yeah. What you saw was the direct connected link. Mm -hmm. So what you see right here connected, that's what you saw. That's the successor. It, it's that's the best path to get to the fifteen oh oh three. Okay. So that's what the successor is. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, can you show the? Because when I when I was doing my learnings on this, I also like to use the show IP protocol. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so here we can actually see what protocols we're currently running. Oh, well, I didn't expect it to be that much. No, I okay. got some. I got some OSPF what, what, stuff on here. Don't worry about it. Let me uh, scroll back up. So here. Okay, what you're talking about. This is telling us as far as eGRIP, this is giving us some information about eGRIP. All right, autonomous system number six. As you see, you've heard of K values, which we'll probably get into later on. Okay, you don't got to worry about that right now. Uh, you can see I was talking about the whole timer earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we got there. Now, here's the thing. Everybody knows what is that 90? When you're thinking of e grip, AD, AD, distance. Exactly, exactly. So remember, e grip actually has two ADs. A lot of people, a lot of people always forget about this one here. Okay, and this here external can be something that may come from a redistribution of from another uh, protocol like BGP or OSPF, or possibly even a static. Okay, and all, and it's, it's, it's still a good route to get to somewhere. It's just that it's less favorable than something that's built from internal with the AD of 90. You get it? Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you can see your your maximum paths. Now, like I said, these are my home routers. Only got, only got two ports on them. So, you know, now, like, if this was Dave's Eve and G, he could probably have, like, a, a dozen or so uh connections going out of one router to various places you know that's where this will come in handy you know mm -hmm. uh you got your hop count and you know we'll talk about this later this here variance oh, yeah i remember that yeah this variance. so when you got you want to do some load balancing right like when i go back and talk about i make jokes about dave 17 pass out of that one router okay uh if you want to load balance traffic out of those different links, your variance command is what's going to allow that to happen. Right. Okay. And uh, like I said, this is just a quick summary of the networks that this eGRIP autonomous system is servicing. Okay. And again, the administrative distances. And that's that. That's that. And like I said, you know, we'll get into the K values later. Uh, and actually, depending on how deep we get into it, there's actually another K value that uh, would be listed here, K6. Uh, that's not in what we are in is known as classic EIGRP. But you will definitely see it in named EIGRP for wide metrics. Would that be related? To, would that be like CC um, NP related stuff? Um, it, it, you know what? CCNA, CCMP, CCIE. It, I guess it all depends on how you look at it. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this in the real world, whether you got a CCNA or CCMP, you, you still got to do it. You, you got to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, me and Dave talk about this all the time as far as what's you know, NA level, what's IE level. I'm going to tell you all this. And I, and I mean this wholeheartedly. The book is nice, but don't be afraid to go beyond the book. You follow me? Uh, I hear Dave preach that to y'all guys all the time. Do not be afraid to go outside the bounds of the book. You follow me? Right. So, yeah. You say CCMP, 
wide metrics, cla- yeah, okay, we, I, I, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But I'm going to tell you this. If you just got a CCNA and your manager says, hey, I need you to go look at this here network, and you see that K6, what you going to tell your manager? Hey, boss, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, this, this, that, this, that MP stuff right here, I only got an NA. You're not going to do that. You, you, you're going to bring yourself up to speed real quick on what that K6 is trying to tell you. You follow what I'm saying? That's, that's why man invented Google for. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so like I said, you know, uh, like I said earlier with the hellos, you know, you'll get the little short term hello, you know, okay, I see you. Hello, I see you. Let's get together. Yeah, you'll, you'll hear that real simplified. But like I said, what I gave you was what really goes on behind the scenes in eGrip when the hellos go back and forth. You know, the more you understand something, the better off you can get nasty, the, 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 the more frequent you can get nasty with it. When you follow me? Absolutely. So. Oh. Also, uh, did you um, you turn auto sum- summarization off, right? You disabled it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. And like I said, we'll get into that later on too. Definitely, we'll get into that as well. But like I said, for right now, I just wanted to give you, you know, I think I'm hitting the 45 minute mark. Um, I, D- Dave is probably giving me the virtual elbow, you know, but. Uh, like I said, this is our first session. I think he wants to stretch this out over several sessions, giving you little pieces to digest here and there. But uh, like I said, we just touched on a little bit of the, of the few th- basic stuff, basic fundamentals. And uh, don't worry, we're we, we going to grow it from here. Absolutely. So you know, if you think you're getting short change now, don't worry. You'll get your money's worth in the end of it. That's for sure. <laughs> I do have one question. Do you plan on going doing any IP version 6? Uh, we can, we can. Yeah, because I think I think we should go go that route well because the future is heading towards that to IP version six anyway. Like Asia, they're yeah. mostly they, all they, IP. They're already there. Yeah, they're already there. Yep. Sure enough. Yeah. Also, yeah. I, yeah, I was just looking at the what do you call it? The uh, multicast for IPv six, and it's actually similar. Well, they all are similar to like the, the 224.0.0.10 um, or yeah. in fixes, it'll be like what FF0, FF. Yeah, with the zero. 10 at the end of it. Yep. yep. Well, it'll be E. It'll be E because. E, uh, yeah, you're right. A, it'll be A, I'm sorry, um, for 10. Um, mm-hmm. in IPv6. But they actually are similar because I, I know I was telling you guys the other day, IPv6 has been kicking my butt. So that's one thing I do remember as far as um, at least the. Uh, they, they were being nice when they were telling us, hey, this is the multicast addresses, and they're actually similar to um, IPv4. Or, yeah, their counterparts, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, they're and, definitely. Uh, yeah, and folks, we're, you know, don't, don't worry. We're going to touch on almost anything you can think of, right? The, the main goal, right, and, and the main reason why we're doing this is we want to make sure that you guys fully understand the background of it and to the point to where you guys have enough tools to go ahead and make it second nature, right? I know, you know, the social media and all that are big influencers. The worst thing that can happen is you guys put on your resume, put out in the, in the air that you know something. Then you get in the hot seat and everything goes out the window, okay? So we're going to pace it. We're going to use Microsoft Paint. I may use Super Mario Brothers. Who knows? <laughs> Until you guys understand it to the point to where when we put you in the gulag and you can repeat it back to us, boom. Know it. So, Claude, awesome stuff. This is good. I, I, I got, dude, I'm on page three of my notes because, you know, I'm learning, uh, I'm relearning layer three as well. So, okay. this, is, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, y'all, y'all guys are more than welcome. You know, I think we've been uh together now for a little what if not a full year yet you know uh we've gotten to know each other we've been through python journeys we've been through layer two journeys with you you know starting everybody off what's wrong sugar um you are coming with us to go shopping for vanities 
Okay. All right. Yeah, I got the money. I got you. <laughs> look, look, it's that, it's that time. She's about to start doing West Coast leg drops off the top rope. So, so, folks, again, big thank you to Claude. We're going to go ahead and let him get some time back now. And, folks, thank you again for attendance. <laughs> I'll go ahead and uh, post this shortly. But, yeah, any questions, um, you know, guys, feel free to put in the chat. And, and of course, um, if, you, if, we, if Claude or anybody in the chat doesn't answer it quickly, it's not, being, it's not being ignored or unseen. You know, folks do have regular, you know, have lives and, and a job. So it, it'll be answered. Feel free to put it out there if you uh, got a question, okay? All right, great. Folks, thank you. I'll, thank you so much. I'll go ahead and end it. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. All right, now. thank you, Claude. Yeah, appreciate this. More Thank than you, welcome. Claude. More than welcome.